Kaiser's Rogus Passion is not exactly an unknown work. It is, has been known for years by both musicians and musicologists, but there was a problem for in recent years um, um, as to the um, performing rights of the work, and this may sound a little bit silly, but there is a German law, um, or there is an article in the German law, Article 71, that stipulates that any musicologist um, who discovers an unedited piece um, um, that he can actually claim its performing rights. Um, now, there was some doubt that this would be the case with the Lord's uh, Passion by Kaiser, and in recent years it turned out that this is probably not. Jesus war zum Palast Kaifas, da selbst die Priester Rat versammelt saß, mir hingerissen, als geführt, und Petrus bald von Gram und bald von Furcht gerührt. Ihm dessen war die Rat noch nur umsonst geführt. Durch falsche Zeugen ihn zu fangen, die halben Kaifas, also zu Jesus sprang. Lots of very short uh, pieces, uh, uh, each with his own character, and uh, it, yeah, it's it's really nice to to be very reactive. Very, uh, uh, we have lots of chance to make colors, to make atmospheres, and uh, that I found very interesting in this uh, piece. <laughs> So that is already a basic choice to take. We did this, we, we've 
formed with Lil Fati, an ensemble that is more, more or less representative for most of the somewhat richer um, German chapels in that time. Um, that means uh, three first violins, three second violins, and so on. Which is, uh, I want to underline, which is a sort of luxury version. And most churches have less than that. Number of voices is much more problematic. In Zonneshausen there are seven, only seven, separate um, vocal parts, but they are not complete. Um, in Zonneshausen, for example, Jesus does not only sing Jesus, but also sings one of the uh, commentary arias, uh, which is a bit strange. Um, uh, but every situation must have been different. Um, there are 22 roles in all, and so the big question is how do we divide these roles of our singers? Um, what we did is we, we chose for um, uh, eight basic singers to which we added three real solos to the modern um, meaning. Um, uh, why this number of 11? Well, it comes down to there is a trio for three sopranos, there is a trio for three tenors, so that really means that you need at least six singers, and that at least two of the voice parts have three singers to it, so you just make for the other voice part the same thing, with the exception of the alto part, because in the Turma choirs, you could leave out your real soloists, which gives you a Turma choir of eight uh, people. Do we know whether it's ever performed like that? No. Um, I'm always astonished to find out in um, how much music a singer could actually sing in an oratorio in Germany in the 18th century. If you look at the original parts we have, it's amazing that there is not just an evangelist part, but the, in addition to, the, to all this music, the same person sings also a few highlights. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing. Already here, for example, the role of Dr. Zion is an enormous, heavy role. But she even sang more in Thomas House. So it's really Und heute schwitze fällt, 
because Peter von Eichen had the idea. He discovered this piece, this uh, Passion of Heinrich Kaiser, and called me one day uh, to say, would Vox Luminis be interested to do this music? And uh, for many years, we haven't done any collaboration with any orchestra. And I was thinking, shall we do it, shall we not? And actually, it took maybe one minute until I said yes to Peter. Why? First, because this is a very interesting project for us. This is music that we love to do. German Baroque, a music that we cannot perform by ourselves because it needs a conductor but also an orchestra and we never do that. And last thing, because we share something with Le Mufati and with Peter, is the respect of the music and the respect of the source and always trying to do the best and to get as close as possible to the best historical performance. Hast du den kein Vernimmst du nicht, wie hart sie dich verklagen? Und willst du nicht zu deiner Rettung sagen? Ihr aber sagt er nicht, dass wir. Unsäglich ist mein Schmerz und selber meine Plage. Luft besäuft, dass sie mich hat genährt. Die Welt, die weil sie mich getragen, ist bloß darum verbrennenswert. Die Sterne werden zu Kometen, mich scheusal der Natur zu töten. Im Körper schlägt sie Erd ein Grab. Der Himmel meiner Seele den Wohnplatz ab. Was fängst du dann verzweifelte, verdammte Mörder an? Wie ich mich soll so unerträglich kränken, will ich mich hängen. In Kurs Kaiser, when we did a production of an of opera fragments of his opera. Uh, Nemo Kantnitsa, we did that in the Handel Academy in Karlsruhe in the beginning of the year 2000, 2001, I think. And, um, and so I discovered this great composer, this fantastic music, um, underestimated. Um, um, there are only two full operas available on CD nowadays, and he wrote 50, 60, 70 operas, uh, by heart, but an enormous amount of operas. He was regarded as the most, single most important opera composer in Germany around 1700. Um, so I got more and more curious um, uh, to hear and to, to, to study this, this Brooks Passion, um, which after all is the first of a very long series of Brooks Passion. We have Telemann, we have Handel, we have Schrelz, we have Vash, there are so many composers. Um, 
And um, one of the sources, um, a manuscript written in the, in, the, in the year 1720, is available online. Um, it's freely available, it's on the website of, of the National Library of Copenhagen. And there is also a modern edition based on that manuscript. Uh, but there is another manuscript of the 20s, um, this is one that's dated 1727, in Sondershausen, in a castle in the middle of uh, Thuringia in, in Germany. And um, this is a sort of, you can regard it as a sort of sister manuscript to the, um, to the Copenhagen one, because it has 90.9% the same music. It's just one little dressing that is different. Um, but it has um, less mistakes than the Copenhagen one. Manuscript and it also has part books that accompany the score. So um, this, for example, for is one was for me one of the very important elements to decide who was going to play the violente parts because it could be either viola or violini or violence. It turns out that in Zona's house, at least, they did it with violence, which is for me also more convincing. And many more of that sort of information, uh, tempo indications for one area, andam lento, for example, that I would definitely have done faster if I would have had that information. So our version is actually based on a combination, what's a combination of these two manuscripts. Um, so our version, our version could be dated around 1725, so to say, um, which is of course 13 years after the creation of the the passion. And that creation, the first performance, took place in Brock's own house in Hamburg. <lacht> ist das alles? <lacht> ist ja, immerhin, das ist schon viel. Ist das irgendwie besondere Musik für dich? Und besonderes? Also die Musik ist schon toll, weil es war eine andere Passion als die, die man heute manchmal immer kennt. Und für mich als Tonmeister ist es auch eine ungeheure Herausforderung, das aufzunehmen. Im Alleingang mit so vielen Leuten, so vielen Mikros und das technisch und künstlerisch alles zu bewältigen, zu aller Zufriedenheit. No, I'm, I'm working now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, just tell me, just tell me. I do it after we finish the recording. <laughs> I think I was waiting for <laughs> 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 
up. Oh my god, look at this. Okay, tell us something. You are such a I know, I know. <laughs> 